everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this leather look designer handbag. It's so easy to do. It's an absolute joy to make. I've really enjoyed this one. I love this very, very cute gift card wallet. So in here you have room for a gift card. You could put a couple of gift cards in there. You could put some money in there as well, but I'll show you how to make that. I've used a little black Velcro dot on that one just to keep everything tied in. I've got all this hardware, which is just from some old jewelry. So don't kind of rush out and go and buy, you know, meters and meters of chain from you know the hardware stores and stuff like that because it can work out quite pricey just head to your local charity shop and just see what jewelry they have and sometimes they have a lot of broken jewelry and people have it in bags ask for those bags or ask if they've got anything broken out the back and you'll be surprised what you can get also you know go to the car boot sales and and have a look at your own jewelry as well so you know you might have something you don't use anymore that was inexpensive anyway and um you could use that and all these rings are key ring rings so they're very inexpensive as well so yeah it's it's come together better than i expected i absolutely love this and um yeah i can't wait to give it to somebody so let's crack on and let me show you how to make it okay so i'm going to start off bit by bit because there's lots of pieces to it so rather than me go through giving you all those directions as i usually do we'll just go straight in and i'll do it as we go so you want two pieces that are ten and a half by eight. Okay, so it's gonna be for the main bag, the front and the back. So along the 10 and a half inch side, you wanna score at seven and 10, and then rotate and score at five. You wanna do that on both pieces, so you need two. Also, along the 10 and a half side, you can score at eight and a half, about three quarters of the way down. Okay. And then you will want a piece, I've already got my, some of it already ready. This is for the lid and this is a piece of seven by four. And along the four inch side, you want to score at three and a half. Okay, and then just fold and burnish. Also, I've gone ahead and I've just rounded off the corners there. Again, that's optional, you don't have to do that. Okay, this is what we're going to be working towards. So with this piece here, just fold and burnish all of your score lines. Okay, and then we just want to do some simple cutting. So along the bottom, you want that half inch tab on your right hand side, okay? And you're gonna cut up this first one, like so. And then up this one here. So you'll have this piece, just cut that away. Okay, so that's now what you should have. And then with this piece here, just take a little chunk off of each side just taking a wedge off there okay and then on this tab again I just like to take a little bit off of each one okay so you will now have two pieces like this so now to get this piece here and this effect it's using this Gemini embossing folder it's one of their 3d embossing folders it is very very good and it's great for all kinds of things obviously it can be used for a pillow which is the name of that one and i'll link it below but you can also use it as a jumper or as this effect here for this leather padded effect so these pieces here because i want one for the front and one for the back now i've stuck down the one that's going on the back the one on the front you'll do separately because you want to hide a magnet underneath it if you're using magnets if you're going to use velcro dots then that's fine but these here are the exact size of this embossed image. So when it comes out, you'll have like a, a frame around it. I just cut the frame away so I have the exact of that embossed effect here. Okay, so you want to cut off this trim basically. So it will give you a piece that measures, you're looking at six and five eighths by four and three quarters. Okay. So when it comes out, so I've done this one here as well, but I'll talk you through that. That's that little bag at the end. So you want two pieces that are that size that I just gave you, so the exact size of this, one for the front, one for the back. Then for the lid, I put another one through again, and this time I've cut this down to three and a quarter by six and one eighth. And then I've just taken my corner punch and just cornered two of the edges. To get that kind of shine effect, to give us that authentic looking leather, that worn leather look, 
you want to use a gilding wax. Now I have these gilding waxes which I've shared before, they're very old but they are really handy. However I will link below similar colours, usually Cosmic Shimmer, they're pretty good with their um, gilding waxes. But if you've already got some and you know they're going to work then brilliant. But the one that I've used is this one here which is it's basically I would say clear if anything with a, with a sparkle through it. But this grey here how about they pick up so that grey there they've all got a mica in them so they've all got a shine and it's the shine you want because that when we buff it down with the tissue that's what creates that kind of leather look so I'm going to probably use that one and that one just to show you that they both work but also you could go for a silver but what you don't want to happen is you don't want it to cover the black colour we want to see the black we just want it to have a shine to it so some of these silvers you might have some that are maybe a bit too matte but that one there because it's already dark it just kind of highlights it really with the silver or the, the kind of mica in it so all I did I'm going to grab these ones here. So I'm just popping my finger in there. You don't have to use your finger if you would rather use something else, but um, you're just rubbing it over. So it's not taking away from the black color. It's just adding a coating. So I just go over and rub, just cover it basically. Now, if I show you this one here, it's the same. It really doesn't look any different to me. So yeah, so if you do have a very dark like gunmetal, then that will work or like I said a clear so it's just giving you that shine which is what I think this one is but you can see there's no difference between those two at all so I'm just going to finish covering this one now I've just got some kitchen towel here and I'm just going to rub right over it and some of it will come off but the idea is you want to get it really shiny because if you're like polishing some silver you want to really buff it up You basically don't want to feel the wax. Now that's so smooth. And the more you buff it up, look at the shine. It's just amazing. It's such, I mean, gilding waxes are brilliant. Okay, so that's what I've done for the lid. And then you'll need to do that twice for the front and back. And then when we get to the little wallet, I'll give you the sizes, but that's the same as what I've done for that as well. Also, I know some of you are going to ask if it would work with the, or opal polish the cosmic shimmer it will but you will not have the black as strong so for example this is because the other ones will really change color this is the golden glow so I'm just gonna just pop a little bit over the top and then we'll buff it up. So you'll get, you'll see what I mean, you get a completely different look. Will still look great. It's, um, you know, it's not a bad thing. So again, don't worry if you don't have silver and you have other things, just play around with whatever you've got. But now if I, okay, so just polish that up. You get a great effect, but it is, it's very different. That to me looks like, you know, a good, worn, shiny leather. Whereas that just looks like a nice pattern piece. So, you know, just think about the look that you want at the end of the day, but it will work with other things. Okay, so what we're going to do, so don't stick, stick one of these onto the back piece while it's flat, it's easier. But like I said, the other ones you want to wait. So we're now going to join these together. So we're going to join those two like so. So I'm just going to pop some of my liquid glue. You can use double-sided tape if you would prefer red liner I would say because it's nice and strong. I'm just going to sit this one, just line up your base score line, make sure you get that spot on. You can always kind of correct the top if you need to, but you want to make sure the bottom all lines up. Okay, and then flip it over and fold it like so. So you've got one half and one, you know, front or back. And then again, and just fold that right over it should all line up nicely again okay so this is the back so I've already stuck it on so turn it upside down I'm going to stick my back one down first then I'm going to add glue to the underside of these two pieces one there and one there and then I'm going to add glue to this piece make sure you get it right to the outer side this glue dries nice and clear so if I do get anything oozing out, it doesn't matter. 
and bring that one up. You want that nice continued flow of the cardstock at the front. And you can just go in there with your bone folder. So you should have a nice strong base. If you do want to strengthen it even more, you could put a piece of grey board in between there just to give it a bit more strength if you are going to put something a bit more weighty inside. Okay, so now you'll have those side score lines. You can just kind of bend against them now and that will just allow your bag to kind of go in like so. Okay. Next you want your lid. Again, don't stick anything on the front there. That's for our magnets when we decide where they need to go. But your lid is going to go on so that you get your flap like so. Okay. So I'm going to, really thinking about it actually, don't stick that one down either because that would have been nice to have gone underneath it. However, I am doing this black trim around other parts so it does still, it still ties in nicely. But if you want to have it underneath then you can do. So just along that score line, that half an inch piece, I'm just running my glue and then you're going to stick it over that one. So yeah, so it doesn't matter if you stuck it on or not. I actually think I still prefer that I've done it first because like I said, I'm going to do this thin little black kind of trim on the matching purse. So it kind of does all work in together. And you can just go in again. Go in with your bone folder so you can just get right into all the inside bits there. Okay, so now we can see we've got this lovely handbag size. Okay, so these are my magnets. These are the 16 mil rare earth magnets. So I'm gonna close my flap down there, all right? Okay, so I've got the glue dots. As I've mentioned before, anybody new that's joining, when you add a glue dot, these ones here are pretty much 16 mil. They're nice large glue dots. So they cover the whole surface of the magnet but scratch the back so it turns white. So can you see like half of it? Half of it's white, half of it's still dark. Scratch over all of it and that basically means that it's transferred onto whatever it is that you're sticking it to and you will be able to peel it off perfectly. See that? So that's covered now. So I'm going to bring this down. I want to stick it onto this bit first because we're going to be covering this. And I'm going to stick it right there. So that is one and three quarters up from the bottom and pretty much bang on three and a quarter from each side so that is the center you want to have three and a quarter each side one and three quarters up from there okay and i'm gonna stick my dot onto the other magnet again scratch the back okay and i'm gonna have the magnet on the top here so it will find its way <laughs> and it will stick itself so now I can just open that up like so it's a really strong closure now we want to stick this piece over here okay and what I like to do is add another glue dot onto the top of my actual magnet just so it sticks nicely to your card so again I'm going to do that on this one and then I'll just add liquid glue to the rest of this. Okay, so now I'm going to add another glue dot onto the front of this one. And again, glue over all of this. Okay, I managed to just save that quickly, but you want to stick your semicircle in inside there before you stick that piece on. So put your glue dot on like I just did, but now you want this little circle here which is two and a quarter diameter and I've also put that shimmer over the top as well. So I'm just going to add some glue to just more, slightly more than half of it and then that's going to go up inside like so. And now that can all close. So that was lucky. There we go. Okay, so now it's the fun part of doing all of the hardware. So what I've gone and done is cut all these pieces here. So first of all, we want to make like the handle piece for the chain. So this chain here is from an old necklace. And these rings here are key ring, key ring rings. <laughs> so you can see there they've got the split on both sides. 
and these are really cheap so if you go for these kind of ones as opposed to proper rings they're much much cheaper and you get loads so these ones I brought a pack these were one inch diameter which is be 25 mil because usually things like this are in millimeters online so I've just gone and got the chain so it's the same size because it was from this necklace yeah they are the same it should be count your links whatever it is that you're using I'll give you the measurements of this in a minute but I'm just going to add these to each end okay so there's my two chains then I have these pieces here and these measure two inches yeah two by three quarters now the reason mine are three quarters is because I'm working within this one inch ring so whatever your ring size is drop it down by quarter of an inch okay and because these have got that piece there if you don't like that look then just have that as the piece that you sandwich in between so you want equal one inch folded over them you don't need to score them just you know fold it and that's what you're going to do so I'm just going to stick one on each end so you want one on this end and one on this end keep these ends free because you're going to attach them with another part of the handle Okay, then you want a piece that's five and a half by three quarters and along the five and a half inch side you want to score at three quarters of an inch and four and three quarters. Fold each of those ends and you're going to now have one of them over this end like that so you can see where we're going now with this and one over this end here. All right, So again just add glue to the half that you folded. Okay, so that's our handle at the top there. Then to just keep that all tied together with this here, I've got two pieces that I ran through, or it was just scrap really from this piece that I cut away that are already embossed and I've distressed them. And these here are slightly shorter, they're five eighths of an inch in width and they are three and three quarters in length. One is gonna go over the top. Okay, so I have a slight border around it like so, and then one to go underneath. So it will also strengthen it and it, will, and it will also seal this folded piece underneath a little bit more. So I'm just gonna stick all that down. Okay, and while that's drying, just kind of keep it in that kind of shape. So you can let it dry like that and just, yeah. Look at that, it looks so cool. It looks like real leather, love it. Okay, so now you've got these, you can trim these down because what you want to have is when you look at it from the front, you want to just be able to see really where that ring kind of comes down there. So, I mean, you don't have to trim it, but it's nice to have it in line with this black trim here. So I'm going to pop that on the back. It's about one eighth of an inch that you're taking off. So I'm just going to snip that there and then I can just line it up against that one there. Now it's up to you how far apart you have them, but I quite like it there I think. So this is, I'm coming in one and a quarter, okay. And this is a very, very strong glue. It will hold jewellery, you know, whatever it is you're going to put in this. If you are going to put something more heavy, then I would sandwich these underneath this piece here and I would also run a brad through it as well. Okay, so. Yeah, I think that looks amazing. I think it looks so real looking. So pleased with this. Okay, so that's the bag. That's pretty much everything done. Then it's down to the personalization, but we'll do that in a moment. Now I'm just gonna bring in this one here. So this is for that little gift card. So it's optional, you don't have to have this, but I did think it was a nice addition. So this is a piece of six by four and a quarter. I'd already gone and run it through my embossing machine. I would say emboss it first and then score, okay? So now it's embossed and it's all distressed and polished. Now you want to score at two and four and a half, okay? And then because I'm going to be putting a gift card in this, I've done it, I've got my hobby craft card here. That smaller side is going to be the bottom. The larger one is your flap that's going to come over the top. So this shorter side is where you want to add just a thin amount of tape because if you go too thick with the tape you can put a very thin bead of glue 
you just don't want it to ooze out too much because I'll show you, now I've put that there, if I was to put the card there, you've still got about a quarter of an inch, so if you do have any glue that oozes out here or here, you want to make sure you can still slide that card in, okay, so just make sure that's sealed up there, you can pop the card in and then stick your sides down, there we go, okay. And then to seal this one, I'm not going to waste, sounds awful saying waste, but I don't really want to put more magnets on that. So I'm just using my black Velcro dots. So this is the brand Velcro. These are the 16 mil or 5 eighths of an inch. But like I said, most things online when it comes to stuff like this is always done in millimetres. So I'm just grabbing a pair there and just pop that in the centre and close that up. Okay. And then I have this black trim which I'm going to run there with a little circle underneath. Okay, and then that's going to have the initial on it again. So this piece here is much longer because I just thought it's easier to trim, but it's quarter, it's three eighths of an inch by five. Okay, these here are one inch circles. I'm probably only going to need one actually, and it shouldn't interfere. No, because it's going on the front. So I'm just going to cut this in half. You only need one, you don't need as many as I've done there and you're just going to stick a little part of it over there okay so I'm just popping just a little bit of glue you just want to tack it on there because then we're going to sandwich it in between the black trim so just make sure it's nice and straight like so and then this piece here is going to go over there but I do want to distress this Okay, so now that is going to go over that. So I'm just going to run glue all along. And then start from one end because it will be straight so you can get that perfect and then kind of let it overhang the other. This is just to get a really nice finish, that's all. Like so. And then you can just come underneath here and just trim that off. Now I'm thinking I might round off the corners as well just to keep it all tied together. So now you have a really nice, looks like a little coin purse, so you could put money in there as well but it fits the gift card perfectly. Okay, look at that, isn't that gorgeous? I think it is, I think it looks, when I'm looking in my monitor I think it looks so real. Okay, so I've just gone and die cut a large S and a small S and I use the this one here is the first edition alphabet and numbers for the small one so it's dinky you can just see it there but that's going to go perfectly on that one and then for the larger S and I thought they looked actually the same the fonts are the same but this one's bigger and this is by X cut but I don't know the name of those ones it seems to have been cut off but anyway I will link them where I can but use any ones and if you want to have them looking like that authentic designer handbag if you die cut it again with your silver facing down or whatever it is then you will have one back to front so you'll see I've got one facing the right way and one back to front I don't think I'm going to do that on the mini purse coin purse I'm just going to have that one like so and then I'll just show you you can then kind of link them in so let me just put that behind there so you could, like, I could put the bottoms of the S kind of linked, like that. That looks quite good, actually. That looks quite effective. There, that's what I'm going to do, I think. So if you see what I've done, there's my two S letters, and I've just popped that one underneath. A little bit there. You can, once this glue dries, if you've got any smears because you're using mirrored card, you can just buff it off. There we go, so that's the shape that I'm going for. So it has my initials there. And then I'm just gonna pop, I'm not gonna put too much glue, just pop a bit on that centre bit and on the edges. And I'll just put a little bit of glue on my wrist there, on my hand. Don't do it if you've got sensitive skin. And then you can just get the glue on that one. Isn't that cute? Okay, so there you have it. I love this. I think it looks really, really good. 
I wish they had a really large embossing folder, like an A4, if anybody knows of a, you know, a real large kind of quilted style embossing folder, please let me know because I would love to do a bigger, I've got another idea for an, an even bigger style, so yeah, I think it looks great, my chain's got a bit uh, tangled up there so I need to sort that out, but I think that looks super cute as well, I think it's just a nice little addition to pop in there with some jewellery, tissue paper, obviously the voucher, you could put perfume in there, so for any, like I said, any real girly girls that you have that love their fashion, I think this is a beautiful gift bag. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I can't wait to see your versions. Thanks for watching, bye.